Hi, um, I'm Clementine and I'm a rising senior at Washington International High School and I'm acting um, co-president of YHS chapter of Leader Stream Big. And today we have the opportunity to meet with Representative Lori Stone. Um, she's currently in our second term of representing Michigan's 28th district and is a former teacher and prioritizes education and focusing on um, quality of public education. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to meet with her today and thank you for joining us. Um, my first question is, could you share a little on your career path into politics and education um, and any like challenges you faced in that time? Absolutely. So I'm going to take you way back to kindergarten because you ask kids as they start school, what do you want to be when you grow up? And if you would have asked kindergarten Lori Stone, I would have said president of the United States and a teacher. Uh, President of the United States probably stemmed from my family's first trip to Washington DC as a family vacation and kind of going and seeing and taking it all in. And um, a teacher because I, my grandma was a teacher, my mom and my aunt were all teachers. That's what I spent a lot of time in their classrooms and um, it just seemed to come very natural to me. And as I grew up, I saw people using government as a means for changing things, improving quality of life, um, to break down barriers. And so for me, I always thought government is uh, a great opportunity if you want to improve the world to get involved through government. And as I grew up, I, uh, I, I continued to go back and forth between education, uh, volunteering in classrooms and reading with kids. And um, I, I enjoyed it, but I also watched changes to the education system here in Michigan. And where, when I was in school, Michigan had one of the top education programs that, you know, for teachers and curriculum and test results. Um, but that also was a lot of investment in education. Funding was designated for schools. Um, and as I watched, teachers were being blamed for a lot of the issues going on in um, education uh, because teachers are basically the only people that can um, be legislated, right? You can't legislate how to parent and other things are tricky. Um, and so, you know, as I got closer to high school and picking where I wanted to go for college, I, people would ask me again, what do you want to do? Where are you going to go to school? And uh, they'd say, so you're going to be a teacher, right? You, you enjoy, spend all your free time in classrooms. I said, not in your life. I think I'm going to go into law. You can't make any money in education. Um, and I think I've always wanted to be in continued public service, but it was like, okay, what, what opportunities is this going to open for me? And, um, you know, teachers I worked with said, well, you know, that's a missed opportunity. We'd love to have someone like you in a classroom. Um, and I, I went on through high school. I, I applied to MSU and uh, was a member of the James Madison College, which is a political science and public service oriented college within the university. And um, with a major in political theory and constitutional democracy, uh, very much with the idea of going you know, pre-law and going to law school at some point. And the more you, you hear about uh, Think, you know, you want to change the world coming out of high school, going into college, you see all the, the moral issues and all the social problems. And you just think God, this world could be better. And how can I make that difference? And um, I would go around and talk about talk to people, okay, I come home from college winter break and say, I'm going to, I'm going to get out of college. I'm going to run for office and I'm going to make the changes that need to be made. And, um, my brother hates me telling the story, but, um, you know, most of the people in the family were like, do it, change the world. You know, we know that you're motivated and you care and you want to do some really good stuff, um, and do it, just get out there and change it. Uh, but I, my older brother, who I look up to and I value his opinion, said, I wouldn't vote for you. And I was like, you know me, we, we grow up together, you know how passionate and motivated and hardworking and all these things, 
that um, I'm, I want to do this. And he said, um, when I vote for someone, it's I want someone with experience and who knows something about what they're shaping policy about. And I was like, okay, I agree with that. Uh, but I want to change education. I know education. I've spent lots of time um, in education. And he said, not good enough. Until you've walked a mile in their shoes, don't presume to know what they need. And I thought, you know, that's a good advice too. I agree with that. And I went back to school and I applied to MSU's College of Education and I double majored and saw a pathway to advocate for education by first going into teaching, getting the experience under my belt, and then um, looking at coming back to it. Uh, and so I, I finished, I did my student teaching in Detroit Public Schools, which was eye-opening um, and very valuable. I was hired into the district that I grew up in, in Fitzgerald Public Schools. And I taught for almost 15 years. I got involved with my union and looked for ways to advocate for education systematic change from within. You know, I became a teacher leader and I, um, and I always thought, you know, maybe in five years, I'll look for an office. I knew it was state rep because state representatives decide the budget for our schools. They decide the curriculum for our students. They decide the testing regimes and how it's used. Um, and they prescribe teacher preparation programs. So all of those check the boxes for what I wanted to maximize my input on. And um, finally, probably about 12 years into my career, there was an open seat in the community. Um, and I thought, here's a great opportunity. I ran for office and I lost. Um, and I thought, you know, what am I going to do next? Do I, am I done? And everyone around me told me, no, like it's not unusual for, to run for office and to lose your first time, but you build um, your reputation, you learn how a campaign runs. Um, that's a huge learning curve. Um, you gain name recognition, people in your community, the more they meet you, the more they talk to you, uh, the more uh, your reputation grows. And um, when I finished that run and was looking, someone told me about another program called Michigan Political Leadership Program. It's a bipartisan program run through MSU's um, social sciences, and it brings together men and women, um, conservative and uh, liberal opinions, and it gives you a whole bunch of background experience, um, developing knowledge about other issues. So while I was well-versed in education, I had a whole host of issues that uh, I could grow, Ed um, energy, um, health policy, and so this program helped me grow as uh, a candidate, as, um, as a legislator, understanding the process and better speak to issues. And then, oh, excuse me. <coughs> I decided in 2018 to uh, primary the incumbent who beat me in 2016 because I was tired of asking other people to fix the problems in education and I was convinced that um, I was not only a, a best advocate for my community, but I was also a better candidate for education. And I knocked thousands of doors, four hours a day, six days a week. Um, and even though I didn't have a ton of money, I was willing to do uh, the work in order to get elected. Wow, great. Thank you for sharing that. It's a really great story too. Um, just get where you are. Um, as an accomplished political leader, what's your advice for students who want to pursue um, high and ambitious career goals and want to make a positive impact in their community? Yeah, don't wait. Start young. Um, I think often, you know, even before we have the right to vote, we have powerful voices and we have strong opinions. And um, you, even though you might not be able to vote on an issue, you can persuade people. You can have conversations. You can um, go to public forums and let your voice be known. 
Uh, you can work as a grassroots organizers, having these conversations and have influence. Um, find out what you're passionate about, get involved and um, start, start having conversations, get to know who represents you. Um, another good piece of advice is to get that experience, work on a campaign, shadow someone who's in office and see what a day in their life looks like. Um, get involved in student government or other programs like this that give you some insights into what, what this looks like, what this future is. Oh, thank you. So impactful. Um, thank you for meeting with us today. I think everything you had to say was really important and will reach um, all the audience, just like all the students that um, we have watching these. So thank you. Well, thank you for doing this and thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel for more resources on college and career, leadership, education, interview with leaders, and more. Follow our other social media pages for updates and upcoming events. Check out our website for some more ways you can get involved in this project and learn some more about who we are and what we do.